Hi, I'm Kuljit Bamra, and in this episode, we'll be looking at some of the instruments that are most commonly used in Indian music. Now, what do I mean by Indian music? Well, for the sake of this series of episodes, I'll be referring to the music that we associate with the Indian subcontinent. In this episode, I'll be giving you just an overview of the instruments because there are other episodes dedicated fully to exploring each instrument in turn. And in those dedicated episodes, I'll be looking much deeper at the instruments and exploring things like the construction materials and the playing techniques. I'll also talk about some of the limitations that those instruments have and some of the problems that arise when playing those instruments in a Western environment or setting. One more thing before we get started, and that is I'm going to assume that you know very little about Indian music and Indian instruments. Please don't be patronised by that. It's just that I really want you to get what I'm saying, and it's the only way I can think of that would speak to the wide range of people that are watching this. OK, so here we go. Let's first look at percussion instruments. Now, obviously, there aren't just Indian instruments that appear in Indian music. Indian music has lots of Western instruments in it as well, including uh, piano, drum kits, vibraphones, etc. But for the sake of this series, I'm going to focus on instruments that are from India itself. And here are some of my favourites. Many of you will recognise these drums here. These are barrel drums, and uh, commonly known as dol. Um, I've got two here, as you can see, the, there's a, um, a bigger one and a smaller one. I call that my baby doll. Sorry, that was a really bad joke. The, uh, the dolls are used predominantly in Bangra music. Um, there are also Gujarati dolls used in uh, folk music. But the barrel drum is found in many, many cultures and many cultures have a similar barrel drum. Um, let's go over here. These are tabla drums and um, Again, I'm going to be exploring these instruments in depth. So if you want to find out more about them, please refer to the other episode. So tabla is used very, very commonly in Indian music uh, and is the main accompanying percussion instrument. Also, as a soloist, uh, you can play tabla. Uh, this is one of my favourite instruments, which is called a dad. In fact, it's a talking drum. I try to avoid using uh, some of the names that these drums are called because they're very difficult to pronounce for people that aren't Indian. So I call this a small talking drum. It's used in Punjabi music. And that's called a dud, which uh, is very difficult to pronounce and also very difficult to spell. Many people uh, know that there are bells and uh, chimes used in Indian music. If you think about spiritual music and religious music, um, I've got a couple of small finger symbols here, and I call these finger symbols. If you're Indian, you'd call them manjira, and they make a beautiful um, bell sound used in religious music and used in temples. Here are uh, a bigger versions of, uh, of the bells. These are called chanj, a bit more like um, clangy symbols, and used a lot in dance music, and also at uh, the time of Garba and Navratri, if you're Gujarati and you uh, celebrate um, the 14 days leading up to Diwali. Quite clangy, but very, very um, piercing. Um, this is uh, one of my favourite instruments, and um, this is called a clay pot. <laughs> uh, well, actually, in, in, if you're in Punjab, you'd call it a matki, again, very complicated to say. Uh, some people call it a gatam, although a gatam is, has a slightly different construction. A beautiful sound. You wouldn't normally hear that on its own unless there was a Bollywood sequence that, that featured it. It's normally part of the percussion ensemble. Um, and another instrument which is very, very common in India and in folk music is the dolok. Can, can you pass me the dolok, please? And the dolok is a very simple log drum um, which is used a lot in. That's not even a drum and it's not even Indian. The dolok, the dolok over there, that one. Anyway, the dolok is a very common uh, instrument. Yes, thank you very much. Um, and 
Most cultures have a log drum in their uh, in their music, and especially in their folk music traditions. That one's not tuned. Uh, this is a sort of smaller version of the door. But that really covers the main um, set of instruments that are used to make percussive sounds, and in fact, some melodic sounds as well, in the percussion ensemble of Indian music. Many of the concert halls in England and Europe play host to sitar players and what I call classical musicians from India. Um, but they represent a very small proportion of the overall landscape of Indian music. If you think about Western classical music here, it's a very similar proportion. But there are some wonderful instruments that really appear more commonly in the streets of India. And let's look at those. This is one of my favourite instruments, and in fact, I would say it is the most common Indian instrument in use today. It's a harmonium. It doesn't look very Indian but it was born in India, even though its predecessors came from Europe. We'll talk more about that in the Harmonium episode. But this is used commonly in religious music, it's used in classical music, it's used in folk music, it's used in temples, and it's very similar to an organ harmonium sound. This instrument over here, many of you that know a little bit about Indian music would perhaps um, guess that it was a sitar, in fact, it's not a sitar, it looks a bit like a sitar, but the sitar has frets on it. This is actually a tambura, and it's a drone instrument. Um, we'll address drones in another episode, but drones are a very important part of Indian music, and the tambura is the instrument that makes the drone. Um, this one's not in tune. But nevertheless, you can hear that it has a sort of twangy, harmonic style drone, which provides a basis for a lot of classical music and religious music. Nowadays, many people have retired this in favour of an electronic version. This is a drone box and um, makes a similar sound to the tempura, but an electronic sound. So, just turn it on. and you can change pitch. So that's the drone side of things. Um, another uh, wonderful instrument is the tumbi, and uh, that's something that I really like. It's uh, not that common in India. In fact, it's used mostly in Punjabi music. Um, could you pass me the, uh, the tumbi, please? And the tumbi, you may recognize, has been used in lots of Bangra music, and it's also used in uh, That is a shaky egg, tumbi. I want a tumbi over there, the tumbi. Anyway, the tumbi is used predominantly to keep a sort of drone going. Thank you. Uh, in Punjabi music, here's a tumbi. Uh, and it's made of a sort of dried pumpkin gourd. And it's got one string. So that's a tumbi. I love that. Another instrument that's very similar to the tumbi is the gopi chand. Uh, can you pass the gopichand, please? And the gopichand is used again as a drone instrument, but it has a certain look. Are you being funny? Right, this is a, a this is the gopichand, and um, a bit like the tumbi, but it has a, a different construction, and also I can I can bend the note. Another quite common instrument, and it's very portable, used by lots of uh, um, religious people uh, chanting, and it has that sort of drone sound again. So these are some of the wonderful instruments that are used in Indian music. And uh, again, I keep repeating myself, but we will look deeper into each of the instruments if you go to that particular episode that's relevant.